Now in our final week, we're looking at some of the policies that you need to be aware of as a teacher, uh, particularly in relation to technologies education, but some of them are a bit more general. So the first is that you'll be going into a schooling environment where there'll be various processes and policies set in place that you need to find out about and adhere to. Now one of these will be an acceptable use policy which sets out what is acceptable and not acceptable in terms of the use of technology in that particular school. Now, if it's part of Education Queensland, it'll be department-wide. Although some Education Queensland schools do have their own specific um, acceptable use policies related to their own particular circumstances. And if you're in another school system, then they'll have their own individualized um, policies. But you should make yourself familiar with these. Of course, they'll set out what it is you can um, do with your students, but also what you can do yourself as a teacher. Now, there'll be various aspects around the use of technology that may have restrictions, um, particularly in the use of the internet, various online sites, um, various online tools. For example, currently in Education Queensland, um, most of the Google tools are not available for use in Education Queensland schools. Um, but other schools are making extensive use of those tools. So sometimes there can be quite significant variations that you may not necessarily pick up on unless you're familiar with the policies. So you should um, explore those and particularly when you're on practicum, you shouldn't assume that because you've come across a particular website or online tool that you will be able to use that with your students. Um, that's just the reality of um, the systems where there are restrictions in place. Now, as a teacher, there are processes that you can go through to be able to use those tools, um, gaining parental permission, gaining the principal's permission, various processes like that, and then through to the department um, in terms of gaining permission more formally. And those sites or web, um, tools will then be unblocked or made available for your use. But generally that won't extend to pre-service teachers on practicum. So you'll need to work with your supervising teacher to make sure that the activities and the tools and the technologies that you're planning on using with your students are available for use. Now, other aspects of course around that relate to digital literacy, particularly cyber safety. Now, there are many things, of course, we want to teach our students about cyber safety, but there'll also be a lot of things that are blocked and restricted from their access. So generally, there is a balancing act in that regard, where there are certain websites and organizations that are set up to help support the teaching of cyber safety, and teachers tend to use those predominantly, um, rather than exploring uh, on your own, where you may come across websites and tools that are not permitted to be used within schools or department environments. Now, in um, schools and in, particularly in Education Queensland, there will be a list of websites and tools that have been pre-approved where the IT manager or the IT department have looked at various tools and websites and said, yes, they can be used with students or they can be used under these constraints. In the main, um, websites and tools that don't require students to log in and provide details about themselves will be more likely to be made available. But there are exceptions to that, particularly if it's within the Microsoft suite of tools, um, where Education Queensland has a a lot more trust in that particular system than they do have in other systems. Now, one important aspect is you, if you want to get really involved in the use of ICT and technologies and digital tools with your students, is to um, form a good working relationship with the IT staff in your school. Now, in some primary schools, those IT staff only come in 
once or twice a week and they're shared amongst a range of schools. Larger schools may have their own dedicated IT staff. Some large secondary schools or colleges, um, particularly K-12 colleges, may have quite a number of IT staff. And they are there for a whole range of purposes. Um, one is, though, to support you and your teaching. Now, other purposes are to make sure that the system is secure and doesn't fall over or doesn't have viruses um, introduced and a whole range of other security matters that they'll look after. But if you have a good working relationship with them, they will help you overcome the difficulties you may have in getting access to and using various technological tools. And they may even suggest some and work with you and help you in your use of technology with your students. Not in terms of teaching, but in terms of making access to the technologies available. Although you should think, you should always remember that they could be a very useful resource as an example of people in the IT industry that you could introduce your students to. So you don't necessarily have to go outside of the school to find people working in the IT industry that you can use as models and examples with your students. You can also utilize the school staff. Now, a few other aspects that you need to be aware of as a teacher. Now, one big one is copyright and intellectual property. Now, copyright is a tough one. Of course, teachers copy a lot of material and a lot more than they should. And in recognition of that or in acceptance of that, what the current system is, um, schools pay a special license, basically saying, yes, we know teachers are going to be breaking copyright. Um, we sort of roughly know how much, and they do surveys every couple of years to work out how much that is. And schools then pay a licensing fee, not for specific individual items, but on the assumption that on average teachers are going to be doing this amount of copyright infringement. So this is what will be paid and will be distributed to copyright owners. So it's a bit of a kludge, but in Australia we don't have currently a fair dealing rule whereby teachers are exempt from copyright restrictions. In the United States, for example, they do have that regulation where teachers can utilize, to a certain extent, copyrighted material for teaching purposes. That is looking at coming into Australia eventually with the free trade agreements with the United States and so forth, but it hasn't been established yet. It's certainly being worked on and that will then make things much easier. But at the moment, there are processes in place. Now, you still have to work within certain restrictions. Generally, it's about 10% of a work that you can utilize. So you can't give your students an entire book um, or entire set of material. Um, and there's various other aspects around that. And of course, once you get into film and TV recordings and audio recordings, it becomes, there's other copyright rules and restrictions and licensings associated with that. Now, in your school, generally the librarian will look after those issues. Sometimes you may be in a private school or um, a school that's large enough where they have a specialized um, audio visual technician that looks after all the copyright in relation to audio visual material. But in the main, nowadays, it's the librarian that becomes the expert in that. So if you've got questions around those issues, speak to your librarian and they'll be able to assist you in what you can and can't do around copyright. Now, the other side of copyright is called intellectual property. Now, in this respect, what you create um, has some intellectual ownership. So if you create a worksheet, now you might think, great, um, but unfortunately, under Australian law, what you create in the um, as part of your employment belongs to your employer. Even if you do it out of school hours or on weekends or even on the holidays and so forth. Now, that said, it's not strongly enforced. Just as copyright is very difficult to enforce in schools, so is intellectual property. So very rarely is it seen um, enforced where schools sort of demand ownership over what you create. 
and in the main it opens up a whole hornet's nest of issues around um, ownership of material. Of course teachers borrow and share material quite readily and that's an important part of the profession of teachers and to put um, restrictions on that makes teaching much much more difficult. So in the main it's very rarely enforced. The only time I've seen it attempted to be enforced is around online material created for specific coursework that could then be on sold and even then it tends to fall apart fairly quickly because um, technically you wouldn't be able to use any material that oh we won't get into it but um, in the main while in theory you have intellectual ownership over what you produce in reality or in in law it's owned by your employer now this also extends though to students this is where it does get really significant and will get more and more significant into the future what your students create is owned by them even if they submit it to you as an assignment or um, work that they produce it still belongs to them so be very very careful if you use student work and share that with colleagues or turn it into a booklet and so forth because if you had a litigious parent that um, called you out on that you wouldn't have a lot of grounds to stand on at all and there could be quite strong financial penalties um, for having breached um, students intellectual property so be careful around that now again it's very very rarely enforced in Australia um, and you can always generally just work with your parents and work for your students and get around those issues but they could be significant if someone did want to enforce that the other aspect around copyright and intellectual property and so forth is that it does form part of digital literacy where it's part of the issues that you are teaching your students about as part of their understanding of technology so there will be elements that you will explore with your students and there are some good websites such as Smart Copying um, and some of the cyber safety sites that also touch on these issues that will assist you in the teaching of these concepts. And in the workshop, you'll explore some of these issues in more detail.